Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is County Executive Pat Ryan. Thank you for taking time on what's a pretty nice day to take a few minutes and join us for an update. We have a lot to cover today, so I'll try to uh, go quickly and uh, get every, everybody back out so you can enjoy uh, your day to the, to the maximum degree possible in the circumstances we're in. So as usual, we'll start with uh, the data and the facts of what's going on with the public health part of our uh, COVID-19 response. We are starting to see a, a slowing of new cases, but we continue to have uh, additional cases every day in the county. Uh, somewhere between 30 to 50 new cases per day is about the rate that we're at right now. We are just shy of 1,300 positive cases. We're at 1,294. We've now tested over 6,000, 6,150 residents. So we're still right about at 21% uh, positive rate compared to those tested. Uh, unfortunately, continue to have to update you all on fatalities of our residents. We now have had 24 county residents pass away due to complications related to COVID. Uh, the good news, we continue to see 200, uh, the, the number of recovered go up, 280 recovered. Uh, we'll continue to be optimistic that that is the number that we'll continue to see go up, not the other numbers. Uh, and in terms of the projections you can see on the, the chart in front of you, we'll, we're showing you uh, best, most likely, and worst case. Uh, encouragingly, we continue to be somewhere between the best case and most likely case there, the, the, the middle and the, the, lo the lower line. So uh, you can see the numbers of where we're headed 10 days out. Um, for those of you that want to go back and check what the projections were last time, our worst case was over 3,000. So that's good news. That means that as we've seen a lowering of the, the growth rate, we're lowering our projections and seeing um, a lower number for that worst case. So all the work that everyone's doing to, to follow the pause guidelines, to stay home, uh, and keep everyone safe and slow the spread, it is working. So thank you for that. And please keep that up. In terms of our hospital capacity, another good news story here. Uh, we have, the, the short version is we have everything we need. Um, you can see on uh, the hospital capacity slide, if we can put that up. Um, you can see here's uh, what we have uh, and what we need. And I, I apologize that the bottom portion there that's covered uh, are the ventilator numbers. So between hospital beds, ICU beds, and ventilators, our capacity threshold, we are sufficient for the near-term need. Uh, the number of COVID-19 patients in hospital beds is down. We're now at 27. We were in the 30s last week, so that is encouraging news. Um, all these data points lead me to be increasingly optimistic about where we're at with the public health response, but we are definitely not out of the woods yet. Um, and we want to continue to make sure we're vigilant. I still don't think it's time to, to let our guard down in terms of the, the public health precautions that we've got put in place. Uh, but believe me, as soon as we feel we can safely lift them, we will absolutely do that. Um, the other thing that we've been working on, we know both to understand the spread of COVID and keep everyone healthy and safe, but also to begin to plant the seeds for us to to reopen, testing is very, very important. Um, so we uh, uh, yesterday opened our third testing site. And again, I wanna thank Health Alliance of the Hudson Valley, Dr. Doyle, his whole team. We were out there on Saturday. Uh, the county team and the, health, and the Health Alliance team worked throughout the weekend to get that testing site up in Midtown Kingston. Yesterday was a rainy day, but a good day, a good first day at the test site. They had over 70 individuals tested, and they're already getting some of the results back. So um, we're seeing a quicker turn of the results there, which we really appreciate. Um, uh, in addition, today we have over uh, 100 uh, individuals scheduled at that testing site. So please continue to spread the word that that testing site is open and available. It's drive up, it's walk up. Um, if we can put up the slide, please, with that information on that testing site. Uh, right, we're having some technical difficulties on that. Uh, 
There we go. Thank you very much. Um, so that's the, those are the details on our uh, Midtown Kingston testing site. It's on 27 Grand Street, which is on the other side of Broadway from the YMCA. Um, it's open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then the, the only thing you need to do to get set up there is call that phone number that you see on the screen first. That number is 845-303-2730. Again, 845-303-2730. Uh, that is the number for the appointments at uh, the Kingston testing site. Uh, and again, I just really want to thank Health Alliance for making that happen so quickly um, and uh, getting more people access to testing in Midtown Kingston, which is a huge improvement uh, to help us expand our testing. The other thing that I want to share, uh, New York State and Governor Cuomo expanded the testing protocol statewide. So now more people can be tested under the guidelines of who's eligible to be tested. Um, so we're going to put up a slide that has that criteria. You may have heard the governor speak about it already. Um, but some of the highlights, basically, it's, it's expanding who's eligible. Um, it prioritizes and allows any individuals over 70, those with underlying health conditions, uh, healthcare workers and other essential frontline workers, and those who may have been exposed to someone else with COVID-19. So again, this is making it even easier to, to be tested and to meet the criteria to be tested. We have our Midtown Kingston site, we have our Town of Ulster site at uh, Tech City, and we still have the site uh, down at uh, Ellenville Regional Hospital. So three sites in Ulster County. Um, the, the single number that you can call for anybody in Ulster County is our COVID-19 hotline. If you have any questions about any of this, that's 845-443-8888. Um, so we are gonna continue to uh, even as we hopefully continue to see the cases decline, we are going to continue to prioritize testing. And just one other note on, on testing. We are talking about diagnostic testing here, meaning testing to see if an individual currently has COVID-19 um, at, at a sufficient level in, within their immune system. Um, uh, we are also working on, but don't have details yet, on antibody testing. Which would, which would disclose if someone had, had, uh, had previously had COVID-19 and had developed an immunity or antibodies. We don't have those yet. That'll be another key step to getting us out of the, the situation we're in, and we are working on that along with uh, the state uh, to expand that as quickly as we can. One last note uh, on what we're doing in terms of testing. Last week, I spoke about um, our plan to support our seniors and to make sure that our senior facilities are being tested and, and we know how vulnerable our senior population is and we know that the density of, of living in a communal setting at a assisted living or a senior facility adds even greater risk. So we are prioritizing and I have stood up a, a rapid response team to go in and support all 13 of our senior facilities. We have now completed testing in two of the 13. Um, the, there's sort of mixed news, I would say, in that testing. Uh, so of the two facilities, one of, the first one we tested, uh, we've tested every resident and every staff member. In the first one, 20% of those tested were positive, with the vast majority of them being asymptomatic. The second facility we tested um, had 30% of the individuals tested positive, and they were also largely asymptomatic. So we are continuing to take proactive steps specifically with our senior facilities and nursing homes to go in, work with the, the leadership of each facility, and we appreciate their cooperation, get everyone tested to have a better sense of what's happening. As we do that, and as we test in more of these facilities, we are going to see the probably the numbers continue to go up, but I think that overall that's a good thing because it gives us a better picture of where we're at and how to keep those individuals safe and isolated from the rest of the of the residents. Uh, so we will continue to keep you updated. We have more testing to do in those senior facilities. Uh, we will be putting in and have put in actually a request to New York State for more tests, um, and we are asking for their help 
uh, on that. We need about 2,000 more tests to be able to do that in our senior facilities. Uh, and I'm also coordinating with our surrounding counties that are standing up similar plans. Uh, I know Dutchess County is also going to uh, implement a similar plan and uh, we're coordinating with Orange as we do on so many other things. Um, but I think it's absolutely critical that we all be proactive in protecting uh, the health of our, of our seniors. So those are really, that's the bulk of our, uh, the, the public health update portion of, of today. Uh, I'm very excited to talk about the, the second portion we're here to focus on today, which is, you know, as we continue to focus on and work on the public health risks of COVID-19, we also need to be in parallel planning and getting ready and getting in place a plan to get the economy going again here in Ulster County. And so I'm very excited to roll out our resilience economic plan, and I'll talk through the details. Um, but the key pieces here, three lines of effort, uh, and you can see them here, recover, reopen, and realign. And what this is really about is we, we know the impact that almost in one fell swoop, closing the whole economy, we know the impact that that has had on, on families, on workers, on businesses, uh, and it's been devastating. And we know we're not quite yet ready to open everything, but we are in a position where we can actually do the work and the thinking and the planning and get all the tools in the toolbox and all the levers ready to pull so that when we're ready and when we can do it responsibly, we can go quickly uh, and we can get people back to work. We can get the economy going again, and hopefully we can actually reemerge from this uh, even in a, in a better place than, than when we entered. Uh, and we can address some of the structural challenges we already had in our economy pre-COVID. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, what each of these lines of effort looks like. But what I, what I think the key thing that I want everybody to take away from this is speed really matters. Moving quickly and smartly, but moving quickly once we're able will really matter to get things going, to get uh, revenue flowing into our businesses to get paychecks into the pockets of our workers. Uh, speed is going to matter. And then all working together is going to matter. Cooperation between you know, my team and our, our uh, economic development, between our county legislature, between all the, you know, the Ulster Chamber of Commerce, our business leaders, uh, leaders in all of our industries and sectors, we're all going to have to work together um, uh, collaboratively to make this work. So speed, collaboration, that is the key. And I know that if we do that, we can absolutely get out of this uh, as quickly as we can, and we can, I think, emerge better, as I said. Uh, so starting with uh, recover, what, is, what does this mean? So last week, I announced the Ulster County Recovery Task Force, and that was really about um, meeting the most urgent sort of human needs that all of us have, um, those dealing with mental health issues, those dealing with addiction issues, those who need food, those who need housing and shelter, or may become homeless due to the economic impacts of COVID-19. So the first step has to be meeting those most urgent needs of our vulnerable residents and families and businesses. So that's really what the recover uh, line of effort is about. We'll work with that recovery task force, and I have my first kickoff meeting with them actually later this afternoon. Um, with that, with that task force. And that will be a coordinated and compassionate response uh, to those uh, socioeconomic impacts. Secondly, our Office of Economic Development and our Economic Development Alliance, our EDA, are already set up to help businesses navigate the, the maze, really, of federal and state recovery resources, grants, loans, uh, capital, the Paycheck Protection Program, the EIDL uh, program, uh, er Emergency uh, Disaster Lending Program. There, there is a labyrinth of these programs, and we are going to be the, the place where businesses can come, get access to those recovery funds, um, and then uh, use them to get their business going again and, and to get people back to work. Really exciting and positive news already. I know there have been challenges, but already in Ulster County, Ulster County businesses have received over $50 million in federal loans, and we know that number is going to be significantly higher as we get more information in. 
I especially want to thank our community banks, our local banks that have been working around the clock to help businesses through these programs, the, the uh, EIDL program and the PPP program. Those banks, uh, Lisa Berger and our economic development team, have all been working 24-7 already to get that money flowing. And now that the second wave of funding, federal funding, is available, we want to ramp that up. And as more funding becomes available, we'll be ready uh, to help businesses navigate that. So that's really uh, what we mean by, by recover. As we're working on recovery, as we're getting money uh, to workers through unemployment um, and to businesses through those other programs, we also have to begin to think, what does reopening look like? How are we going to do that quickly but safely and in a responsible way? How are we going to open all the different types of businesses and industries that we have? Uh, so the smart way to do that, I think, is to listen to the experts, to listen to the businesses and the leaders in those industries that know how to do that and are already thinking about how to do that. So we're standing up industry-specific working groups, and they'll be tasked with developing plans uh, that will allow them to implement reopening protocols sector by sector. So we'll develop that here in Ulster County. We'll share it with our regional partners and surrounding counties. And then ultimately, we'll feed that up to New York State to have input into the unpause plan uh, as, ad as outlined by Governor Cuomo and his team. In addition, we are standing up uh, teams of business mentors that will help guide businesses through uh, how to reopen and how to do that planning, how to adjust business models if needed to operate in a new environment, any other support that they might need to have that one-on-one -on -one mentorship um, for all those businesses. And then finally, our Office of Employment and Training which is really focused on workforce development, making sure our workers have the skills they need and the training they need, they are going to work um, in an effort to support job seekers and make sure they have skills and training and the support they need uh, to get back to work if they have lost their job, and to support our businesses that are going to be looking to rebuild their workforces and to do that quickly and to do that smartly. So that's really what the second uh, effort here is. Uh, you know, we've got recover and reopen, so that's really what we're focused on in terms of reopen. Uh, and finally, realign. We have a lot of urgent things we need to do. I mean, we need to meet those urgent um, socioeconomic needs through recovery. We need to get things going in a thoughtful way to reopen the existing businesses we have. But there's also this huge opportunity in the midst of crisis and change to realign, to really think, um, how do we go beyond what we had pre-COVID and actually emerge with a better, more equitable, more just, and hopefully more productive local economy here where we don't have a situation that we had pre-COVID where four in 10 uh, families in Ulster County were already living paycheck to paycheck. If we emerge from this and we don't take the time to address that, then I think we've failed to do right by the, everyone in, in the county. And, and, and that's something that I'm personally very committed to and focused on. Um, so how are we going to do that? Some of the key steps that we'll take, um, we will bring together groups that sometimes didn't always work as well together, our Economic Development Alliance and our Workforce Development Board. So we have the group charged with thinking about a skilled workforce and the group charged with thinking about businesses and economic development. And how do we bring them together to really identify what are the jobs of the future in Ulster County? What are, what are our training programs and colleges and community colleges and BOCES and schools all need to look like to prepare that workforce? Secondly, we will continue. Uh, we had started this Ulster 2040 initiative to really chart a future for what the economy should look like in 2040, 20 years out. Uh, we are going to continue that work. And uh, that report uh, is already due uh, in July. So uh, that will be an even more urgent and important uh, project. We had a, our first pre uh, post-COVID Ulster 2040 meeting last week. It was a great discussion. I think uh, I'm looking forward to the, the recommendations of that group. And the recommendations of that group are really about what are the four or five high growth uh, uh, parts of our economy, sectors of our economy that we want to invest in, that, that we want to have county-led investments uh, in those sectors so that 20 years out we see them as 
growing parts of our economy where people can be employed. And then finally, a very important tool uh, that, I, that I'll ask uh, that we continue to work and improve. We need to work very closely with our, our IDA, our, our Industrial Development Agency, in order to make sure that as we get things going, as we re-energize our Ulster County economy, we have all the tools of the IDA available to help attract businesses, uh, but more importantly, to support the existing businesses we have, to give them uh, the relief and the tools to allow our existing businesses to get back uh, get back going and, and, again, to come back stronger. Uh, so we'll be wor looking to work more closely with that IDA uh, going forward. And I know the, the legislature shares that view, and I'm excited to continue to build progress there. Uh, so I know that was – there are a lot of pieces there. Um, I think the, the key thing to understand in terms of our framework – there are three different lines of effort here. Again, recover, reopen, and realign. They're somewhat sequential, but really we need to do the work in each of these uh, all at the same time. We need to be thinking about what does the economy of, tw of Ulster County look like 20 years out, and we need to be thinking about how do we safely and responsibly reopen our hotels and our uh, hospitality sector and our restaurants and our retail. We need to do both tactical things and strategic things at the same time, and we need to do them quickly. We need to do them collaboratively. And ultimately, it all comes back to me to this idea of resilience. This is a theme that we hit on right from the beginning of our response to COVID, this idea that in the wake of a crisis, we as a community have to be resilient in, in the face of these challenges. And that's about everyone working together. It's about building a structure that is sustainable, that's equitable, that's able to absorb a hit here or a hit there and, and not be uh, debilitated. And so the whole underlying philosophy of our recovery to me has to be about resilience, rebuilding in a way that will position us even better and stronger coming out of this over the next months and years. Uh, so this is something, if you couldn't tell, that I'm very excited about, that I know many of you are. We have a whole host of business leaders across different industries and sectors that have already volunteered uh, to be part of uh, these working groups to think about reopening, that have offered their advice uh, about the, the medium and, and, and long-term and short-term investments and decisions we should make. Uh, so I'm very excited to work with everyone uh, to have this be that collaborative team effort. And I am confident uh, ultimately in the people of Ulster County, in the business leaders we have, the business community we have, all the great not-for-profits and community groups that we're all going to work together and recognize that our fates are intertwined and that we can come out of this in, in a better way if we bring that resilience mentality to what we do. Uh, on that note, uh, pr our project resilience, not to be confused with uh, our overall economic uh, recovery strategy here, but project resilience, which is about meeting food need, urgent food need, uh, using our community fund, continues to do incredible work. We have now delivered over 81,000 meals across Ulster County to all the corners of the county, plus another over 11,000 meals um, those were 81,000 prepared, over another 11,000 uh, provided through delivery of groceries, and we're going to be ramping up more and more grocery delivery to families in need. Again, it's all thanks to 16 local teams on the ground in each of our towns across the county, all volunteer doing this incredible work, and to 160 restaurants that are providing food at cost um, and also helping them keep their workers employed. So this is just a great success. And so much of what we learned in project resilience, in the effort to deliver food and keep our businesses open, that same thinking of we need quick, innovative approach that's uh, not tied to some of the old ways of doing business, but really is creative and new, that same mentality is what we need to bring to our overall economic recovery through through our resilience initiative. And I'm confident, based on what we saw uh, already, that we will be able to do that and we'll be able to do it together. Finally, I just want to end, as always, by thanking everyone watching for 
whatever part or parts you're playing in responding to this unprecedented crisis. I continue to be so proud of how we've rallied as a community, how we've looked out for each other, how we've uh, followed very tough uh, guidelines that we've been given in an effort to keep everyone healthy and safe. And it's, it's, it's worked. I mean, we have, we have seen the numbers uh, much lower than the worst case projected. We are seeing our hospital numbers uh, flatten out. Um, and I'm confident that if we continue to work there and we start thinking about reopening uh, and our, our resilience economic uh, initiative, we're going to be okay and we are going to get through this. Uh, and it, that is in large thanks to a whole host of critical folks out there on the front lines, our healthcare workers, our grocery store staff, public transit workers, teachers, pharmacy workers, mail carriers, delivery workers, journalists, and everyone else on the front lines that uh, is doing that are doing their part uh, to keep everyone safe. And again, I ask each of you to hang in there a little bit longer, do your part as well. Uh, and I am even more optimistic uh, day by day that despite our losses, despite the tragedy, we will come out of this okay. Uh, and in fact, we'll come out of it even better than, than we came in. So thank you. Uh, we will see you again on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Uh, we are going to continue to have more specific announcements about our economic recovery plans uh, throughout this week and into next week. Uh, as we continue to roll those out, we'll make sure you're updated. And of course, we'll continue to update you on all the health aspects and anything else going on. So thank you and stay healthy and safe. And we will see you on Thursday.